guys, welcome back to the channel where I cover missing persons, unsolved cases, crime news, and more. The story that Maddie's mom, Jennifer Soto, told the police and the story that she was telling the media, they're not exactly matching up. Looks like her timeline is skewed. No one has been charged in Madeline Soto's death, but we do know investigators are looking into who knew what and when. And some of that means looking at those initial interviews of the couple and the ones later on. Sources tell me the statements about the timeline are not consistent. Jennifer Soto told us last week that the last conversation she had with her daughter was about her 13th birthday party the night before Maddie disappeared. I told her good night and um, yeah, that was it. But according to documents, Sunday night was not the last time Soto saw Maddie. New documents show that Maddie's mom told deputies on February 26th that she saw her daughter getting dressed for school at 8 o'clock that morning and that her boyfriend then took the teen to school. But since that initial report was taken, we learned from the Orange County Sheriff that Maddie was likely dead earlier than that. Yeah, and that also sickens me that she's all over the monster right there. She's all over Stefan. It's... It's nauseating. It is disgusting, guys. It's gross. Now, as far as the story goes, what she told police, here's the narrative according to the report taken by law enforcement on February 26, 2023, at approximately 1948 hours, uh, Deputy Joseph... This is, the, this is who wrote the report. Responded to Village Park Drive. Her address is redacted, but we do know their address at this point. Uh, Orlando, Orange County, Florida, regarding a missing juvenile. While on the scene, the step-parent stated he dropped his daughter off at school. And when the mother went to the school, the daughter was not there. The parents searched within the neighborhood in places where the daughter may have gone. The parents could provide a location where the daughter may have been, uh, but yielded negative results when deputies checked the area. The juvenile was entered into FCIC, NCIC, and Emersource as missing disabled, which I'm not really sure why I'm missing disabled. My investigation revealed the following. When I arrived on the scene, I spoke with the mother. Jennifer Lizette Soto, who gave me verbal and sworn written testimony. Now that's important. This is this is supposed to be this is testimony. She's supposed to tell the truth. On February 26, 2023, at approximately 0800 hours, Jennifer observed missing Madeline Soto getting dressed for school. Yeah, that's not what she told Channel 9. That's not what she was telling everybody else. I saw her the night before. She went to bed. She was showing off her gifts. And, oh, she had such a great day. She didn't do much. She just went right to bed. Yeah, Jen. It's not matching up. Stephen Stearns, the stepfather, uh, took Madeline to school, dropping her off near the intersection of uh, intersection of Town Loop Boulevard and Hunters Park Lane at approximately 0830 hours. Jennifer went to Hunters Creek Middle School in an attempt to pick up Madeline at approximately 1600 hours when she discovered Madeline did not make it to school. In an effort to find Madeline, Jennifer looked through the neighborhoods near Maddie's school and went to her mother's business office located at uh, Redacted Village Park Drive. So I guess that's actually where they met her. I was over at the school. I later spoke with Stephen Stearns, who stated in a verbal and sworn written statement the following. At approximately 0825 to 840 hours, Stephen uh, dropped Madeline off approximately one block away from her school. Stephen watched Madeline leave his vehicle and walk toward the direction of her school. As Stephen was driving away, he could see what appeared to be Madeline searching through her book bag. He did not think any anything of it due to Madeline usually looking through her bag to find headphones so she could put them in before going to school. Now, if he normally didn't take her to school, because mom said she normally took her to school, 
why would he think that 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 was normal? No, he wouldn't. Stephen began heading home when he attempted to stop for a vape juice at a nearby vape shop, but determined it was closed. So he went home to Kissimmee. Once Stephen was home for about an hour, he went back out to retrieve a vape juice and then run errands. Stephen stated he returned home and stayed home at approximately uh, 1430 hours. Which, of course, we all know that's a bunch of crap. Because she was deceased before 8 a.m. So, all the stories they like to be telling us. And we, all, we, knew, we knew Stefan was lying. But it's becoming more and more clear that Jennifer is just as much of a liar as her boyfriend is. Our detectives have determined that Madeline was never dropped off. Instead, we believe she was already dead at the time and that Stefan Stearns moved her body in the early morning hours on that day. Channel 9 has been going through statements from Stephen Stearns and Soto trying to piece together what happened in the last few hours of the little girl's life, starting with our interview of the couple. Her mom told us last week. We dropped her off at school, close to school. Um, she wanted to walk the rest of the way. But in that same interview, then said. I wasn't the one who took her to school in the morning. That was my partner. Um, you notice how she's her her expression is just very odd to me. If you watch her eyes, she's kind of staring off into space. She doesn't have a lot of emotion, uh, and she's very very you know jumpy, like she's shaking her leg. Her behavior to me is very odd. Detectives believe Maddie was likely dead early Monday morning because a video timeline shows Maddie's belongings being dumped in a dumpster at 735 by Stearns. At 819, Sheriff Mina said video shows Maddie in Stearns' vehicle believed to be deceased. Since then, the case has moved to Kissimmee Police, and sources tell us that Soto has been interviewed multiple times by detectives at two agencies and that they are looking closely at all the statements she's made. But officially, Kissimmee Police won't comment you know as much as I really wanted and really want to believe mom didn't know mom wasn't involved the more well these interviews don't help okay she tells the she tells law enforcement obviously a bunch of crap a bunch of lies stupidest thing she could have done and then she goes and tells the media a whole different timeline does she think that they're not going to check that I guess she didn't I hope she's lawyered up at this point if she already hadn't before because I, I actually believe she's going to be facing charges I want to believe she wasn't involved in her daughter's death and she wasn't involved in in all the uh the essay of her daughter. But we we're, we're finding out through all these reports that Stefan had been essaying Maddie since she was 11 years old. 11 years old. Of course, those are the charges that he's facing right now. He's still, as I record this on Thursday evening, 7 p.m. on Thursday evening, there have been no, there has been no one charged with the murder or homicide of Madeline Soto. I believe that could be for two reasons. A, they don't have to rush it because they don't need to rush the clock because Stefan's he's in jail he he's he's got no bond he doesn't ha he's not going anywhere so they can get their investigation done all their i's are dotted all their t's are crossed or what the other scenario that the other reasoning i don't want to believe but it's 
it's it's hard for me not to consider it is that Jen her own mother was involved in this essay and more than just knowing or potentially knowing I mean involved there's been someone who stated that she was quite aware of it and was a part of it I hope that's not true but at this point nothing whatsoever would surprise me in this case as sad as that is nothing would surprise me and again I'm, I'm not going to read the affidavit of his arrest they have uh, released it less redacted and the descriptions it it makes me think that there's no way he could he could be getting these kind of images or videos by himself What I will state is the beginning here states that on February 26, 2024, at approximately 2,000 hours, uh, redacted, uh, which we all know now is Madeline Soto, a 13-year-old girl was reported missing by her mother. The mother advised her daughter that her daughter's stepfather, Stephen Stearns, picked her up from home and dropped her off at Hunter's, Cre Hunter's Creek Middle School. Uh, third, 13400 Town Loop Boulevard, Orlando, Florida, on February 26, 2024. The mother then went to pick up Maddie from school at dismissal and learned Maddie never showed to school. An interview was conducted with Stephen. During the interview with Stephen, he provided consent to search his phone. Uh, however, he stated he accidentally performed a factory reset on his phone on February 26, 2024. Upon reviewing contents of Stephen's phone, several images and videos were located which depicted an apparent child and goes on from there to talk about the acts essaying that occurred. Yeah. So this means, again, she was 11 and 12 years old. Images dating back to 2022. Of an 11-year-old Madeline Soto. Why? Why was this allowed to happen in their home? And how much did Jennifer know? Because I, I, I have gone from that she didn't know to she had to have known something. How could she not know? They all lived in this condo together. There was three of them in the condo. It was Jen, Stefan, and Maddie. They were all there. Three people, and I believe they had two dogs at, at some point. I don't know if they still have two dogs. It's not a huge house. And... Two years of abuse. I just, I just can't, I just can't tell myself. I can't believe it. That it doesn't make sense to me that she wouldn't know. Yeah, again, it is possible that she's oblivious. That's always going to be, you know, on the side right now. But. I allegedly believe that she knew about it. She may or may not have been a part of it. And at this point, I am foreseeing charges coming against Jennifer Soto. What those charges are, I don't know. And depending upon her involvement or, you know, to what extent... If she just knew and wasn't involved in in Maddie's death or, you know, maybe she helped cover it up, a proffer could be in her future. We just saw that happen in the Adam Montgomery case. They're giving out proffers like they were giving out candy. Kayla Montgomery got the best deal of all. 
she was she basically was Adam's right hand man, right hand woman. She she did about anything for him. She didn't lift a finger to help that baby Harmony and she did she assisted him in covering it up. She assisted him in many, many ways. I'm not going to go into details here for those that are not aware of the case. If you are, I have a whole playlist on Harmony. And she got she got a uh, she got this amazing deal. And today, coincidentally, she had her parole hearing. She's going to be out in May on parole. So, yeah, both things happen every day, whether we like them or not. So, at this point, my question is, how much did Jennifer know? And how much was Jennifer involved? Those are kind of my two questions. What do you guys think? Again, I could be totally wrong. Maybe she... Maybe she really was an oblivious as hell person. And if it comes out that she didn't know anything, I will apologize. Profusely. But I don't think that's the case. I really don't. I believe there was some knowledge or involvement. Or both. And we'll know more once once further charges come out. Now, they did have her funeral yesterday. Apparently, it was a private family affair. Uh, apparently, uh, both Jennifer and her father, who... Uh, who normally resides in Texas, were there. I'm sure that was an interesting thing to see. And uh, she, Maddie was laid to rest. So that tells me the autopsy's done. I'm sure there's toxicology that hasn't come back yet. But So we'll see. We'll see what happens when we hear about the cause of death. We, we already know it's a homicide. But was she drugged? Strangled? You know, remember Jen at one point said when they asked her how she was doing, she said, I feel like I can't breathe. Was that sort of a a hint? I don't know. It makes you think, doesn't it? But this poor baby, she was not protected. Her mother didn't protect her. Her mother's boyfriend was her abuser and ultimately... Her alleged killer. And it's 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 a story I'm just I'm so sad and tired of hearing about. This happens this is happening so much, guys. This is happening every I don't know, it just seems like it's happening every week. It's not every week, but it's it's happening too often. Multiple times a year we hear of very, very similar stories. And they shouldn't be happening. We need to protect these kids. They need to be protected. We got to do better. As adults. And as a society. We've got to do better to protect our children. But let me know what you guys think of uh, all these current things that are going around. Like I said, t two years, she was essayed. And what do you think about mom? Like I said, there's a lot of questions in my mind right now. And we'll see what happens when Kissimmee Police Department, in the corner, they all let out the newest reports. If they don't release them, because I know a lot of folks are saying that if they don't release them because she's a minor, I'm like, well, they, they, they're going to come out. I'm sure they'll be heavily, heavily redacted, you know, which nobody needs to know all the details. I'm surprised that some of the current documents are, are so, or not as redact, or not so redacted anymore, rather. 
because she deserves respect. She deserves the respect and and people need to, uh, we don't need to know all those details. We really don't. We just need to know she was abused and who, who did this to her and we need to help her get justice. All right, guys, that's all I've got for this one. I hope you have a great rest of the day. And most of all, stay safe.